Today's video is sponsored by Dashlane. So this was an interesting review today. We have Drop offering an entry-level mechanical keyboard that has a very stripped back feature set versus some of its other offerings, and it comes in at a price point that's pretty compelling. Whether or not this board will be a hit for you at this price point really comes down to what you prioritize out of your keyboard experience. The big details, it's a TKO form factor, no wireless, no hot swap. It includes your choice of either Halo Trues or Gat Yellows, and it does have backlighting, but it's not RGB. It feels like the kind of board that may hit the mark for somebody who just wants to buy a mechanical keyboard and call it done. Maybe not so much for somebody who really wants to get in to the hobby of mechanical keyboards. We're gonna talk about why exactly that is and see if this may be a good fit for you. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're looking at the Enter Mechanical Keyboard from Drop. For transparency, Drop did send these units out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Drop Enter comes in at an MSRP of $90 US, and while it was in pre-order for a minute, it is fully in stock now and should be shipping like the next day after you order. It is a 10 keyless layout with nothing out of the ordinary in terms of layout or keycap compatibility. That's one of the best advantages of a TKL versus like a 65% is that finding new and inexpensive keycap sets is super easy. It comes in three case colors. You got black, green, or silver with a white plate, and each has their own keycap colors to match as well. In terms of case geometry, it's dead simple. It's not a floating switch design, so you got standard case height right up to the lower edge of the keycaps, rounded edges on the anodized aluminum case as well with a plastic top cover. Nothing particularly noteworthy on the design. Feels similar in language to an Apple product, honestly. Underneath there is nothing but feet. The two rubber bars on the lower edge are pretty grippy, but the single flip down feet is simply lacks this. You can tell there's rubber there, but it's too firm in durometer to be grippy. It's like slick. It may as well be plastic as well. Because of this, the board moves around on me on a desk mat and it moves around on a bare wood top. It does fine on like a lacquer top, so it'll probably work great on a glass top as well. Outside of that, the only thing of note is the connector, which is flush mount USB-C. The included cable is color matched also, again, white in this case. Nothing to write home about here. It's just a white plastic cable, similar to like an iPhone charger cable. On top of the board, we're absent any sort of indicator LEDs, a decision that I'm actually a big fan of. Instead, the caps lock will look brighter when activated. This also holds true for scroll lock and the windows lock as well. When you see flickering in the footage, it's because these are dual voltage. Like you don't see the flicker in real life, so it's not a flaw. It's a feature. The bezels are uniform all around the board and aren't wide enough to be bothersome. They're significantly thinner than the alt or the control boards, making, again, for a cleaner look. Keycaps here are the same material as the ones found on the alt and control by default. If you order the board in green, you actually get the same gray charcoal colorway as well. It's no accident here that all these caps are available as a separate purchase, just like we saw in the most recent episode of The Plug, so you can change these up if your chosen look gets stale on you. Replacement sets for the Skylight series will run you 45 bucks. Really not bad at all for these sets. And speaking of things that are not bad at all, I'd like to thank Dashlane for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support the channel. Dashlane makes it super easy for me to manage all my online logins and accounts seamlessly across all my devices. No more easy or reuse passwords and no more password resets when I need to get into seldom used accounts. With most of our holiday shopping occurring online this year, you may find yourself creating a bunch of new accounts that you now have to keep track of, as well as entering payment information to a lot of new different places as well. Dashlane can help you keep track of all of that with stored login info, common form fill data for shipping, as well as auto fill payment info. Better still, you have access to all of these tools seamlessly across your desktop, your laptop, your tablet, and your phone. Online security is serious stuff. You should really do your own research, but Dashlane is something I personally recommend and trust to manage all my accounts. So make your life easier and try Dashlane today for free on one device by going to dashlane.com slash badseed. And if you like it, you can use my code badseed to save 25% off. Thanks so much to Dashlane for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It's nice then that the keycaps are the same quality, so still a light texture on the surface, good thickness, double shot backlit PBT, though some of the molds get pretty chewed on the edges. Backlighting is an important distinction here, as you will get backlighting both on the base plate and the individual key, so it does have lighting, 
just not RGB. You just get a single white backlight. You do get brightness adjust. I expect the crowd to be pretty divided on this one. This is aimed at the market of people who require or prefer a backlit key bed, something a lot of laptop users will appreciate, but that don't want like a rainbow RGB explosion on their desk. The white light is pretty true here as well. It leans a little yellow. It's gonna be tough to pick up on that in some of the footage because I don't always shoot for the most accurate colors or white balance. Switch choice comes down to Halo Trues if you want tactile or Gat Yellows if you want linears. It is refreshing to not see Cherry MX as the automatic go-to here, and the choice of Gat Yellow is a solid one because it is regarded as like the budget banger switch. Oddly, this is actually the first time I've used these switches, and while they do feel good for what they are, I'd probably choose to lube these. This is a process that's made much more difficult by the fact that I can't remove these from the board without desoldering. And the stabilizers here are drop stabilizers. I actually got the Halo True version first, and then held off on the review because it was my understanding that the final retail version would have lubed switches. My early copy did not. After waiting for the final, these stabilizers may be lubed, but not in any way that makes any meaningful or tangible difference to the sound or the performance of these stabilizers. So this continues to be an area of opportunity for drop boards for reasons I can't fully comprehend. So you may have picked up on some case ping in that sound test. It is more prevalent on certain keys than others. If there is any noise dampening material inside this board, it's minimal. Between that, the higher pitch sound of the cap and switch combo, and the stabilizers, this is not my favorite sounding board. Another thing that falls in line with the entry level nature of this board is that there's no software or any layer customization of any sort. So you'll be provided a handful of system features, a couple shortcuts and some media functionality, and that's about it. So those looking for a specific tailoring of their typing surface should and probably are looking at a higher price point. And that brings us to our value conversation. 90 bucks US. For $94, you can get an Amp Pro 2. You get RGB, you get wireless, but you are limited to a 60% layout. $104 and you get Ducky's practically exact version of this board, but you are limited to Cherry MX switches, which could be a pro or a con depending on your views. Once you get to like that $110, $120 price tier, a lot more opens up, including the GMMK from Glorious. But to stay right around this price point, even a Durgod with no backlighting goes for right about 100. The biggest competition in this class that I can find is the Keychron K8 with white backlight and hot swap for 80 bucks. RGB will get you to $90. Aluminum case upgrade will get you to 100 bucks. Keycaps are ABS though looks a little generic overall in presentation but it also has wireless bluetooth 5.1 there's enough here between these two boards to actually warrant a full head-to-head -head video wireless is great but when we're talking about entry level i think hot swap is the killer feature i can't see both sides of this argument there definitely exists a person who wants a simple clean mechanical keyboard to put on their desk and call it a day. Somebody who isn't going to will never go down the rabbit hole of custom mechanicals and if that person is you 
this board will fit the bill. But if you're curious about exploring the world of mechanicals, Hot Swap obviously gives you the ability to move from like a low end or an unmodded switch to a modded or higher end switch. You can also get in there and work on your stabilizers. And in general, just kind of get your hands inside your board to make a meaningful difference to the sound and the performance of your typing experience. So all that said, I like the price of this board for what it is and who it's for. The guy who wants a mechanical keyboard, but isn't going to make it a lifestyle. For everyone else, it's a matter of picking the features important to you in terms of layout, switch choice, hot swap, wireless, whatever. And if you're really looking to get your feet wet in the hobby, I recommend a board with hot swap. I'll be digging a little deeper here pretty soon too into the new Ice White GMMK from Glorious at $109 US. I think that may be the one if you don't need wireless as it can give you that clean, simple white aesthetic, but also has hot swap. As always, links down in the description for everything that we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.